Hello, welcome. If you're trying to find out what the PCD is, pitch circle diameter, and you're looking at how to measure that on a wheel, this is a video for you. If you're one of my subscribers, welcome back. Uh, this is not a bobber related video or even a motorcycle related video, so sorry for that, but um, it is related to cars and wheels, um, so let's get into it. So recently I uh, bought some alloy wheels for this van behind me that I'm converting into a camper van and during the process uh, I had some difficulty with the PCD of the required wheels and how that should be measured. So these are the wheels, original steelies, new alloys and as you can see there they are five stud wheels. Now what do I mean by five stud wheels? Well there's five studs or five bolts holding the wheels onto the hub. Um, the difficulty uh, when we were talking about the PCD, it was from the fact that these are an uneven stud number, the five studs instead of six or four or eight or whatever you want to pick as an easy, even number. Now if it was an even number of studs, then you could just measure direct stud to stud, but you can't do that uh, when it's an uneven stud number. Now I'm going to get into that, but it's uh, raining here, so I'm going to jump into the back of the van. I've got my whiteboard in there and, uh, and we'll get into it. So we're in the van, it's dry, I've got my whiteboard. And I'm going to try and explain what PCD is in, in my terms uh, and how to work it out for a, a five stud or an odd number of studs. Now th this applies to, to, to wheels or flanges or anything else that's got a, a uniform bolt pattern running through it. Okay, so pitch circle diameter. So we're talking about a circle here, right? Just now, let, let's think of it as, as the wheel that, that's in question. So we've got the circular wheel and your bolt pattern follows that circle around. So in our case, it's a, a five bolt pattern. Now, excuse my uh, my sketching here, but so you've got one, two, three, four, five, five bolts. Now, when you're measuring pitch circle diameter on uh, a stud pattern that's even, you could just measure directly across from bolt to bolt. On an uneven pattern, you can't do that because your line is going to pass not through the center of the circle. Now to get your diameter, that's the maximum distance between the circumference here and the circumference there, so you're going to have to go through the centre point. Now in an uneven pattern, you'd be, you'd be going you know, from here to here or here to here and it's not going to pass through your centre point. So you can't utilise that, that method, which is where I ran into difficulty when I was buying the wheels from the vendor. What you can do is you can measure from the adjacent bolts um, and then we can work out what the PCD is. Right, now if I know what PCD is and I know how to work it out, then why did I get any difficulty? Well, the thing was, I was working overseas at the time and I actually got my wife uh, to try and take some measurements for me so that I could relay that to the supplier. Unfortunately, this is what I ended up with. So as you can see, uh, pretty inaccurate. Um, difficult to tell one way or the other. What I'm going to show you is the way that I work it out, but also uh, another way that's uh, often suggested to, to work out what the PCD is on a, uh, an uneven um, stud number. However, it's, uh, in my opinion, pretty in inaccurate. So I've seen this method uh, listed on various wheel suppliers' websites where they say for a five stud wheel you can measure from the outside of one bolt hole to the centre of what you consider to be opposite. Now it's not opposite as we've said before because it doesn't run through the centre line but it's the second bolt round on a five bolt pattern. Now for this wheel in particular that would mean if I loosely measure from the outside of that hole here to about the centre there which uh, that's, that's roughly about right. We are, I don't know if you can see that, but we're at 133 millimetres, which I know for this wheel, that's uh, about 3 mil over where it needs to be. So that might be useful if you have an idea of what the PCD might be and you're just trying to check, you know, maybe you've got a couple of selections that you're trying to jump through for the size of wheel on the vehicle that you're talking about. But if you're trying to get an accurate measurement, um, I, th I think that's too far off. I'm going to show you the method that I like to use with uh, a bit of high school maths and I'm going to round my numbers to the, in the nearest full millimetre just for ease of the demonstration. If you're trying to get a proper accurate measurement for a PCD uh, then you probably want to be going to maybe two decimal places. Right so what you want to be doing is measuring from the centre of each adjacent bolt hole to the next one in line. Now that can be a little bit difficult to, to get it right in centre so the easiest thing to do is measure from inside edge to inside edge like this and then you can measure the diameter 
of the bolt hole uh, and then you just add that on to your previous measurement and that gives you the additional radius from that edge to the centre and that edge to the centre so then you've got your total. So in this case I'm saying I've got a hole diameter of 18 and I've got uh, a distance between each adjacent bolt there, edge, inner edge to inner edge of um, we'll, just, we'll just round that off to say 58. So that's a, a distance in millimetres of, of 76 mil uh, centre to centre from the adjacent bolts and this is a, a vernier caliper for anybody that, that doesn't know when I sent a photograph to the vendor in question they called it a ruler so yeah it's, it's not a ruler it's a caliper. We're going to throw some calculations down on the board here and we'll see what we come up with. If we draw a straight line from the centre of this bolt to the centre of that bolt and we do the same all the way around you end up with a five-sided shape you've got a pentagon now if you run that into the center there of your original circle you end up with a nice oscillus triangle now what we can say is that each one of these triangles is going to be exactly the same because the bolt pattern of the spacing between the bolts is the same all the way around so the angle in here 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 and here is going to be identical because you've got 360 degrees in a circle and you're going to divide that by five. Now, of course, if you had a three bolt pattern or a seven bolt pattern or whatever, that you'd be dividing the circle by that. But in this case, it's a five stud pattern. So we're going to have 72 degrees in uh, each one of these angles here and each one of these isosceles triangles. But we only really need to be considering one because what we want to do is we want to work out the distance between the center of this circle into the center point of your main circle and from that you then know what the radius of the circle is and we can then double that to get the full diameter which is your PCD that's going to be your pitch circle diameter so next step we know that you have 72 degrees in the, the internal uh, angle here and we know that all, uh, all angles in a triangle add up to 180 so that's going to give us 54 in each one of these here 54 and 54 and we also know from measuring uh, on our existing wheel that we have a distance from the center point here the center point here of 76 millimeters now we're going to do a wee bit of high school uh, maths so i'll rub this out and then we'll get back into it Right, so as it turns out, that was a permanent marker, not a whiteboard marker, so we'll just move over the side here. So I'm going to redraw um, this singular triangle that we're looking at, um, and I'm going to stick in that we know that that's 76 millimetres there, and we know that that's 72, millim uh, 72 degrees there, sorry, and then we've got 54 and 54. Now, who all remembers high school maths? and the laws of sines. So law of sines, you have A over the sine of A equals B over the sine of B, which equals C over the sine of C. Now, what we need to do is we need to label our triangle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this, uh, this is gonna be side C, which makes that angle C. I'm going to make this side A, which makes that angle A, and I'm going to make this side B, and that makes that angle B. Now, what we need to do is rejig the formula so that we can work out uh, one of the sides. So we're going to say side A, okay? So we need to do uh, A equals, and we need to see what else we've got. So we know we've got side C, we've got all the angles, so we're going to do uh, A equals um, C multiplied by sine A from here. So it's C times sine, sine A over sine C. Now hopefully we can see that on the camera because uh, the screen's just gone off on my camera. Um, now we'll stick the values in here. I'm going to try and do this on the calculator and, and get the screen to, to show it. So uh, let's have a go. Right, so we've got A equals 76 multiplied by the sine of uh, 
54 degrees divided by the sine of 72 degrees and that gives us okay so you can see that uh, on the calculator hopefully that's just an iPhone turned on its side and you get a scientific calculator and that gives me 64 point uh, I'm just going to uh, round this up here so call it 65 64.65 uh, millimeters that is the if we go back to a triangle that's the distance of this leg of the triangle here um, which is from your center of your bolt and at the center of the circle so that is the radius so we then need to multiply that by 2 to give us the uh, diameter which is your PCD so we go back to the calculator and we will put in 64.65 times 2 and that gives us 129.3 so that's a PCD of 129.3 millimetres so there you go, working out the PCD of a 5 stud pattern using high school maths and the law of signs. Now, you'll be pleased to know that there's also another way to work it out which is essentially much easier. You can take that same value that we were looking at with the two adjacent bolts, in our case 76 millimeters, and you can multiply that by a constant which is 1.7012 or you can divide it by 0.5878 which is the inverse of that that's 1 divided by 1.7012 I'm going to show you where those numbers come from so we're back on the whiteboard I've redrawn the circle after cleaning it and you can see here this is the two constants that I'm talking about you see 1.0712 or you can uh, divide it by 0.5878 and the reason for that is as follows so if we're looking back at the the same sort of triangle we had before 72 degrees, 54 degrees, 76 degrees, and that's based on these five studs. Now, if we want to use trigonometry, we need a right-angled triangle. So what we can do is, if we draw a line through the middle of that triangle there to give us a right angle here, then we can say that this distance has now been halved. So that would be 30 so I'm a pen from it, 38 millimetres there. So what I'm going to do is I'll draw this triangle on its own over the side here. So I've taken this triangle and I've drawn it on its own now. And we've got half of the 76, which is 38, and we've got half of the angle of 72, which is 36, which is essentially the full circle of 360 degrees divided by 10, because instead of having a five bolt pattern here, if we have divided the uh, original triangle on two then essentially we're multiplying the number of stud points that we would have so it'd be 10 so we're down to th 36 degrees now if you remember uh, trigonometry or socatoa you have uh, the sine of the angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse now in this case we're going to say that that's the hypotenuse that's the opposite and that's the angle that we're looking at. Now what we want to be finding out is the hypotenuse because that is H over here, which is the distance between your center point and your stud on the outside here. So if we rejig the formula so that we've got H equals the opposite over the sine of your angle. Now at this point, I will point out that the sine of 36 degrees equals 0 0.5878 and that's where that constant comes from so if we were to take your 38 divided by 0.5878 that equals 64.65 now like I said before that's this distance here which is your radius so multiply that by 2 again and you get 129.3 which is exactly the same as when we've done the law of signs for an isosceles triangle so two different methods using high school maths with the exact same results now at the start of that calculation we split the isosceles triangle in two so that we get a right angle triangle to let us work out h the hypotenuse but actually we need two times h so if we go right back to the beginning we don't actually need to split this in two because if we 
elongate this out, you know, if we were to make this bigger and bigger, so that effectively we double all the values up until we get, you know, this being double the radius, so it would be your diameter, that would mean that the, your half value here would be 76. So when you actually go to do the calculation, you can simply just divide your measured distance between here and here, which is 76, you can divide that by 0.5878, and that'll give you exactly the same result as what we did when we broke it down there. Right, now I know for this particular van, uh, this is a 2015 Fiat Ducato, that the wheels only come in a PCD of either 118mm, so 118, or 130, which is 130mm. And we've calculated there, based on some measurements and a wee bit of rounding, that we've got 129.3, so I think it's safe to say that we're lying at the higher size um, PCD there of 130. So there you have it, working out pitch circle diameter using high school maths. Hopefully this is of use to some people. Uh, the idea of making the video just came out of my head after the issue I had with ordering the wheels. And then a week later, I had someone ask me what pitch, uh, what PCD was, what pitch circle diameter was, because they, they didn't understand and they were buying wheels for their car. So it's maybe more of a common problem than thought. Uh, apologies to those that were expecting another bobber related video. Um, more of that to come soon. Uh, but I'll catch you all later. Cheers for watching.